Chapter 3 is the start of life, genetics, and prenatal development. Humans begin life as a single cell created when a male reproductive cell, a sperm, pushes through the membrane of the ovum or the egg, the female reproductive cell. Um, about an hour or so after the sperm enters the egg, the two gametes fuse and they become one single cell, a zygote. The zygote is that new cell that's formed by the process of fertilization, and we'll read a story about that in class next time we get together. We have some things that make us each unique and, um, and makes us products of our parents. Our genes are composed of a sequence of DNA, which is deoxyribonucleic acid. You'll need to know how to spell that on the quiz next week as well as on the midterm. So please pay close attention to the spell. I'm just kidding. No, you don't need to know how to spell it. Um, but DNA, your DNA is on every cell in your body, every hair follicle, every skin follicle, your blood, uh, your own DNA, which is the combination of genes that you get from your parents. Humans have over 100,000 genes, and they're arranged in 23 pairs of chromosomes. So you have 46 chromosomes, you get 23 from mom and 23 from dad. Through the process of mitosis, nearly all of the cells in the body will contain the same 46 chromosomes of the zygote. I tried to find a better definition of mitosis and meiosis. Um, had a tough time finding a good definition of those. If anybody finds a great one and wants to share, I'll share it with the class. The best I got on meiosis was uh, each gamete receives one of the two chromosomes that make up 23 pairs, uh, and random transformation of particular genes. The ultimate outcome is trillions of possible genetic combinations, and that's meiosis. One of my favorite topics in this chapter is twins. Monozygotic twins are twins who are genetically identical. So they would have to both be boys or both be girls, and they occur when a fertilized egg splits. So it's one sperm, one egg, and they split. So monozygotic meaning one zygote, one fertilized egg. Dizygotic twins occur when a woman's body releases two eggs and both are fertilized by separate sperm. So those would be fraternal twins. They can be two boys, two girls, one boy, one girl, but di meaning two and zygote uh, meaning fertilized egg. Twins are considered high-risk pregnancies because the human body was designed to carry one fetus at a time, not more than one, so they are considered higher risk. Women who are older tend to have a higher rate of twinning, um, and African American women tend to have a higher rate of twinning. Most of the statistical data on twins are related to the dizygotic, fraternal twins, not the monozygotic. There's some explanations for dizygotic, um, where monozygotics are still kind of considered freaks of nature in some ways. There's not a lot of explanation as to why that happens. The increase in fertility assistance has also increased the numbers of dizygotic twins. So how do we know if a person is going to be a boy or a girl? So some sperm have an X on them and some have a Y on them. Um, and it's kind of interesting. King Henry VIII, they say, had several of his wives killed because he wanted a son and they kept producing daughters and it turns out that it's actually the male that determines the sex of a child because the woman will give a an X to it's the 23rd chromosome remember we talked about the uh, the 23 chromosome pairs so the woman always gives an X and then the man could give an X or he could give a Y so if the man gives an X and there's X X then you have a girl and if the man gives a Y you have an X Y and then it would be a boy so when we have all these genes and we have all these chromosomes and all these things coming together, we've got some things from mom and some things from dad. How do, is it determined which trait we will have? Well, the dominant trait is the trait that's expressed when two competing traits are present. And the recessive trait is the trait that's within an organism. It's there, but you don't see it. Well, what does that mean? This just looks at some different eye color combinations and what the odds are of the eye color of the baby. It also uh, depends about if the parent carries, uh, is a carrier of the recessive gene of the um, non-displayed eye color. 
your genotype, that's the underlying combination of your genetic material that's not outwardly visible in an organism, and your phenotype is the observable trait that you can actually see. And I highly recommend you look in your textbook where there are some good examples given on page 55. So homozygous and heterozygous. Uh, homozygous, if you think of homo meaning same and hetero meaning different, homozygous means you inherited similar genes from both parents. So maybe both of your parents had blue eyes or both had brown eyes. Uh, heterozygous means you inherited different forms of a gene for a given trait. So it might mean that one of your parents has blue eyes and one of your parents has brown eyes. In the book on page 54, they talk about uh, sex-linked disorders. Uh, PKU is an inherited disorder, and it is an X-linked disease. If you look in your book on page 54, you'll see it shows if the mother and if the father are both carriers, uh, what can, the chances are of the child having the disease. So take a look at those illustrations, and if you want, we can talk about this further in class next week. The, they've now mapped the human genome, and we can see the number of genes going from yeast to worms to flies to humans. Uh, and it looks at how different we are from each other versus how different we are from other uh, living creatures. Actually, this slide makes a slight change in some things previously stated. They always thought there were about 100,000 genes in humans, and it turns out it's probably closer to 25,000, um, and that's not many more than other organisms that are far less complex. Uh, scientists have discovered that 99.9% .9 of the gene sequence is shared by all humans. That means you and the person sitting next to you and somebody, no matter regardless of how light or dark their skin is or where on the earth they're from, 99.9% .9 of, of your genes and their genes are the same. So we're a lot more similar than we are different. Behavioral genetics looks at how heredity affects our behavior. And it now turns out that there's a lot more in our behavior that's actually biologically based, uh, more so than was once thought. These are some diseases, disorders, uh, that are behavioral and are now considered to be genetically uh, linked. Huntington's disease, early onset uh, Alzheimer's, Fragile X, late onset Alzheimer's, ADHD, dyslexia, and schizophrenia. Sometimes recessive genes that uh, can cause a disorder when they're paired with another recessive gene, meaning both parents may carry a recessive gene. And we'll talk more about this in class as well. When there are issues of potential, if two people are planning or thinking about having a child, they may go for genetic counseling or go for genetic counseling when pregnant to find out what possible inherited disorders there may be. Uh, there are some disorders that can be detected prior to birth. There are some that parents can have blood tests to find out if they are carriers for. Some of the prenatal testing that can be done, amniocentesis, they take a needle and they pull some uh, fetal cells out of the amniotic fluid around the baby. There are some risks to it, so it's often, often they look at the risks compared to the chances of this di whatever disorder it may be, um, often women of what they call advanced maternal age, which has shifts, uh, I think they now say around 35, they try to advise women to have an amniocentesis. Uh, but again, there are risks involved. Ultrasound, uh, most people have heard of ultrasound. They actually use sound waves to uh, produce an image from the unborn child. And as far as anyone knows, uh, ultrasounds have no uh, risk factors. Chorionic villus, villus sampling uh, also involves taking uh, something from internal, so there's a slight risk, but it is taking samples of the hair-like material that surrounds the embryo. Here is a little bit more of an in-depth list. This is from your textbook. It's table 3-2. Temperament. Temperament is the, it, the book definition, patterns of arousal and emotionality that represent consistent and enduring characteristics in an individual. What does that mean? It's kind of what makes your personality different from the next person. Uh, what 
gets you going compared to what gets someone else going. What might upset one person and not phase another person? Research now shows that our temperament is more biologically based and genetic than they once thought it was. Um, almost everything we talk about in this class can be tied back to is it nature or is it nurture? Uh, and using animals they can often study um, in breeds, similar breeds, and looking at things that where something might be genetically similar or different based on specific traits. And this can tell us a lot also about humans and what is genetic and what may not be genetic. Twin studies are another thing, uh, study that's used to uh, look at biological differences versus environmental differences. Um, if they, my kids have actually taken part in some research studies for twinning and they look at often comparing identical or monozygotic twins to uh, dizygotic or fraternal twins and thinking about the differences being related to biology versus environment. IQ and intelligence, there's a direct correlation between intelligence and biology. Genetics definitely seems to play a pretty decent role in current research anyway uh, in intelligence. So if you think about a child who's adopted and if you had information about the birth parents chances are that the by adopted child's IQ and intelligence would be closer to their biological parents than it would be to their adopted parents so this chart looks at genetics and IQ and it looks at identical twins who are reared together and I'll tell you I know for a fact that my twins have an IQ within two two to three points uh, from each other which is pretty close so they look at identical twins reared together and they have if you look over here it shows between 0.8 and 0.9 percent median correlation showing the relationship so it's a very strong correlation between identical twins and their IQ identical twins reared apart was next so that means biologically identical twins who were raised in completely different families and completely different settings still had a pretty uh, pretty close IQs. Fraternal twins of the same sex were uh, next. Fraternal twins with a different sex, a parent and a child, siblings reared apart, foster parent and child, and then they did children in general that are reared together. So this kind of, a lot of the research is showing that IQ is genetic. Intelligence is genetic. So what that last chart shows is that the closer the genetic link, the closer and more similar the DNA, the closer, the stronger the correlation that their IQs would be similar. So it's interesting, okay, IQ is similar based on biology, but what we also have found through research is that how neurotic we are, how much of an introvert or an extrovert we are, how social, how much we like to be around other people tends to uh, have some biological impact. This is looking at American babies Irish babies and Chinese babies and looking at some of their uh, infant behaviors, their motor activity, their crying, fretting, vocalizing, and smiling. And one of the things they found was that there tends to be some strong correlations based on culture. We're going to skip ahead to fertilization and that's when the sperm and egg join, uh, the male and female g gametes, to join a and create a single cell and we'll talk more about that in class. Uh, the three stages of prenatal development are the germinal stage, then the embryonic stage, and the fetal stage. The germinal stage is about the first two weeks following conception and it is when the sperm and egg are making the journey and they're joining and then they're going traveling to the uterus to implant uh, and attach and, and continue to grow. The embryonic stage is from about two weeks to about two months and that's when a lot of the major organs start to grow and from that two months period till uh, until conception is considered the fetal stage in class we'll talk about different problems that arise in pregnancy and things that are done uh, to help solve those miscarriage and abortion also topics in the chapter we'll talk about teratogens in class uh, factors in prenatal development that are important mother's age uh, diet, health, use of drugs, all very important topics. Mother's prenatal care is a huge issue uh, when it comes to prenatal care. Uh, mother's drug use, fathers and their influence, uh, smoking and using drugs and physical or emotional abuse of their wives can cause, or, or the mother of the child can also uh, 
cause a negative impact. So all of those things come into play. And that is the end of chapter 3.